Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Logan, and today I wanted to take a deep dive into whether or not it's worth your time and money to put together an inexpensive media server solution with something like a Raspberry Pi, which is of course a very popular single board computer that runs Linux. And in a lot of ways, it's really well suited for smaller scale in-home streaming use. But there are of course some compromises that you're probably going to be making when you go for a solution like this over a proper NAS, or maybe even a traditional desktop PC, which may or may not actually matter depending on how you want to use your server. So let's talk about it. First thing you need to consider is cost. And if you look at a board like the Raspberry Pi or one of the many capable Pi compatible clone boards on the market, I'm actually a really big fan of these Libre computer boards, what you'll notice is that the barrier to entry is actually quite low. These days, you can get a capable server board with a quad core on processor and four gigs of RAM for like 50 bucks. But of course, you'll need more than just that to get started. If you've never had a Raspberry Pi before, you'll have to budget for at least getting the board itself, a power supply, an SD card for storing the Linux operating system, and some kind of storage or storage interface for adding hard drives or NVMe drives, not to mention a case, unless you're okay with just having this lying around exposed. And all of these parts can start to add up significantly depending on what you choose, but on the flip side, if you already have a phone charger somewhere and you have a USB hard drive you could start with, for example, well, tiny single board computers actually give you a really good opportunity to start yourself small and scale over time. And since it's all running on a very efficient ARM processor, the running costs are going to be extremely low compared to just about any old computer you might get your hands on. Another thing to consider though is the time you'll spend actually trying to set up your server and what kinds of capabilities you can expect it to have. And this is a pretty difficult topic since a Raspberry Pi could be way more capable than a really old desktop PC for streaming media, but realistically it's not hard to find a mid-range desktop from about the past 8 years or so that has DDR4 memory, and those things are still pretty capable. Either of these options on the table would be a really good candidate for installing Linux, but crucially a regular desktop PC can also run Windows while the Raspberry Pi is stuck on Linux. So if you don't want to go through the effort of learning how to set up Linux, install your server software, and maintain it, which isn't the most intuitive thing for someone new to Linux, then you might want to go with the desktop PC. And of course, if you shell out for a modern NAS like a Synology, you won't have to mess around with any lower level stuff, since all the Linux is hidden behind a really nice web interface, and all of your storage will automatically be managed with redundancy in the case of drive failure, among other really nice benefits. But of course, this is a way more expensive option as well. And once you have your server software running, there's one really big feature that you're probably going to be missing out on with a Raspberry Pi or similar ARM server board. And that is the ability to transcode your media on the fly. And the reason that's important is because the files that your movies are stored in, like an MP4 or an MKV file on your hard drive, aren't always compatible with the device you're trying to play them on. So generally what you want your media server to do is take that data and process it into a video encoding that the client device can actually read. And that process is called transcoding. Like you're transforming the video into a different encoding. And the thing is, transcoding takes a lot of compute power. This is something that I discussed at length in another video just a couple of weeks ago where I actually tested out four old computers I had lying around to see what kind of power consumption I would get while transcoding 4K video. And as it turns out, only the two newest computers I had were able to do it fast enough for my video to play back smoothly, and even then, the power consumption was pretty considerable. And unfortunately, on a low power ARM processor like the one you would find in a Raspberry Pi, you're just not going to be doing any kind of transcoding. And this isn't necessarily the end of the world, in fact, I think it's better if you can avoid transcoding in favor of direct playback, where the media server just sends the video data on your hard drive directly to the device that you're watching on. This will usually give you a smoother experience with less power consumption and better video quality. But the drawback here is that you need to make sure your client is capable of this direct playback, and that might cost more money to get that feature. 
For example, a Shield Android TV using the VLC app can do this just fine, but you won't be able to play your movies and TV shows from a web browser on your computer or laptop. In fact, in some cases, you might be better off not even using Jellyfin or Plex on a single board computer, because these programs really do require a lot of RAM and decently fast storage to offer a good experience. But most cheap ARM boards only offer 2GB of RAM and an SD card slot for running the OS and software, which is way slower than even an older SATA SSD. Not to say that's the end all and be all, if you're running a lower end board, I still think you can get really far by installing a lightweight DLNA media server package, which is an older set of protocols that's designed to make it easy to access your media over the network. It's supported by millions of devices, and if you set it up correctly, you can use something as old as a PS3 to stream from your server, so if you have one lying around, you might be able to give it some new life as a 1080p media streamer for your media collection, which I think would be a really good way to reuse some old hardware. But another issue that I really feel needs to be mentioned in the decision between a PC and a Raspberry Pi server is that of reliability. And one huge drawback with most of the single board computers on the market is the fact that you don't really have I.O. that's designed for adding a lot of hard drives. You'll be pretty lucky if you end up with a single SATA port. So really all of your storage on a Raspberry Pi is going to be connected over USB. Honestly, this is fine, but you're still limited in how many drives you can realistically add, and things like RAID for redundant storage just aren't meant to work over USB. So if you have a drive go out, you might lose quite a bit of data. By contrast, a regular PC will have a proper SATA controller that's connected to the CPU via some PCIe lanes rooted inside the motherboard, and this is a tried and true setup. You get the fastest access to your hard disks, and usually you have at least three or four on a modern motherboard, plus PCIe slots to add extra SATA controllers if you need them. Now I should mention that there are options for adding PCIe SATA controllers to modern Raspberry Pis, but this also increases the cost quite a bit and might not be what you're looking for. Honestly, this is mostly about expanding your setup later down the road, so if your storage requirements aren't that big and you don't care about having more than just a couple of drives, the Pi might actually be worth it in this situation. Just keep it simple and make sure you don't have anything that you can't afford to lose. The biggest things that you're going after with a Raspberry Pi setup are the insanely good power efficiency of a lightweight ARM processor and the ability to have a really small and compact server setup that lets you configure your software however you want both without spending a whole lot of money or having to compete with a bunch of people on eBay for someone else's old crusty Best Buy PC. But in doing so, you also lose out on some of the expansion opportunities of a regular desktop, which may or may not matter to you. In the end, I think each person really needs to decide if something like this is going to fit their needs well. I know these boards are very capable, but personally, I drop my money on a used NAS for my network storage, which definitely cost more, but it gave me a really good return as far as usability and convenience is concerned. So I think that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you found it helpful, and let us know if you're considering investing in some new hardware for a home server, just like this little arm board or maybe something a little bigger, and let us know what you ultimately end up going with. Let us know if you have any questions or comments down in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our future content. And as always, have an awesome day.